What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking about data exfiltration. So there may be a circumstance where you're on a network, but it's quite restricted because the IT administrators have filed off subnetworks and filed off things talking to the internet. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few different protocols you might be able to use to exfiltrate data from that network, because typically um, the administrator will allow some sort of protocol to talk to another subnetwork or remotely just because of business needs. Um, so what I've got here is a Kali Linux box with all of the tools that I need to be showing you installed and I have a Windows 10 machine that's going to act as the device on the network that you want to be kind of exfiltrating data from. So the first protocol that I'm going to talk about uh, is SMB because Windows natively supports SMB and it uses it all the time so it's kind of the easiest thing to try first. Um, the Impacket project, so if I just show you on GitHub, the Impacket project here comes with smbclient.py. Uh, using that, you can spin up an SMB share very easily and uh, exfiltrate data using it. So going back to my Kali Linux, you can run this using Python, um, the path to the SMB server.py, uh, put your share name, the path to what you want to share. So in my case, it's my Kali desktop and also SMB2 support flag on the end of that will allow SMB2 support. Um, so that's the securest way to do this. So if you just enter on that, that spins up an SMB share. So you can now go to your um, exploited machine um, and point that towards the Kali Linux box, like so, using the IP address, so that's 129. Um, sometimes you do have to put the share on the end of this depending on configurations but for my case you don't have to and you can just go straight into the share like that. So now we have my Kali Linux desktop shown on the Windows 10 machine. So of course using this I can either put an exploit onto the Windows 10 machine or we can use this to exfiltrate data. So for example I've got a, pretend this is a sensitive document, I can simply drag and drop that into the SMB share as that's put on there. Now if we go back to the Kali Linux machine, you will see that we've now got doc for smb.txt there. So we've just successfully kind of exfiltrated data using SMB. Perfect. So the next thing I want to show you, we'll just close this off, is the FTP protocol. Um, again, sometimes Windows machines have FTP installed um, using the Windows installer. So you can go to a command prompt, simply type in FTP, and that will give you the FTP um, command line. So what we want to do in our Kali box is run an FTP server. So again, I'm just going to show you a GitHub here. I found this uh, project called Pi Simple FTPD, um, and this is a very simple FTP server essentially because we don't need to do anything fancy, just we need to take some files and upload some files. So clone this to your virtual machine or whatever you've got, and you can run this very simply by pressing enter. Um, what this does is it starts an FTP on all of the, um, all of the IP addresses that are linked on your machine, uh, on port 21 FTP and it also gives you a username and password to use so there is a bit of security there involved it's not an anonymous thing. Going back to the Windows 10 machine uh, you want to be putting open uh, and then the IP address of the machine uh, which was 99129 uh, and that connects you want to put the user so I believe it was user and the password was that let's see if that will copy over it has, so we've now logged in to FTP on the Kali box, which means we now have the ability to, again, upload an exploit, for example, to the Windows 10 machine, or exfiltrate data back to the Kali Linux box. Uh, and to do that, you know, there's a range of options using FTP, but you would just use the input, wherever that is, uh, input. Use the input command there, so it'd be uh, input, and then the file you want to put on the Kali Linux server. Um, and you can also retrieve files, obviously, by using the get command. So that's FTP. The next thing I'm going to show you, if I just close this one off, is HTTP. So this is a very obvious one. I think this is a thing um, that everyone is probably going to try first, um, because typically you will have, you know, port 80 and 443 open. So 
I have a simple HTTPS server here. You can find this on GitHub as well. Um, it's a very common, uh, commonly known one. And all this does is opens a port on 8000. You can change this in the, in the Python file to 80 or 443, or actually any port that might be open through the firewall. Um, and again, it opens it on all interfaces. So if I go to my Windows machine here, open up a browser and go to port 8000, you'll see that that is connected using HTTP. Um, and here we can see the folder in my Kali Linux box. So that is this. So we've got simple HTTP server and also the FTPD, um, which I showed earlier. And here we have simple HTTP server and simple HTTPD. Um, this one also comes with an upload um, functionality. So that's how you exfiltrate data. Um, but of course, again, you can also upload exploits using HTTP as well. So that's another protocol you could potentially use. I think the thing to think about here as well is not only using all of these protocols to exfiltrate data, but actually look on the machine and see what you've got there. Uh, sometimes machines have TeamViewer installed. Sometimes you could use email. You know, you've, you might have got into someone's machine. You can actually use their email to send things. Um, you might even be able to use Skype for business, things like that. So really it's about looking at the machine, uh, what has it got installed and trying to use what it's got installed to exfiltrate that data. Um, sometimes um, data leak prevention software is on there. So in that case, you might want to think about how you can hide the file from that. So that might be encrypting it using a zip, 7-zip, WinRAR, things like that to try and bypass the DLP. But I think that's from rare cases. I've not really come across DLP software too much. So um, you probably won't have to think about that. One of the final things I'm going to show you is FT, TFTP. So this is actually a thing you can do on Metasploit. So using Metasploit, it has a module called TFTP. It's an auxiliary module. So if we just, you can get into that by the way by using use, I'll show you that. Use auxiliary server TFTP, and that'll bring you into what we've got here. Uh, just go on options on that and set your options. So output path is gonna be the path where you want to you know, show the FTP server to. Um, the server host is gonna be what you're hosting it on, so that's the Kali Linux address. The server port is gonna be 69, because that's TFTP. And the TFTP route is also gonna be probably the same as the output path, because that's the route of the TFTP. Um, to run this, very simple, just press run. And that starts the TFTP server on your specified address and port. So that's now running in the background. If we go to our Windows 10 machine, um, Windows sometimes have TFTP uh, pre-installed. It might be installed by an administrator. So this is another thing to look at. Um, so again, you can upload an exploit, take away sensitive data. So firstly, I'll show getting an exploit. So you can use TFTP with the I flag. You want to put in the address of the Kali box, use the get command, and we're getting important data. So uh, as we specified desktop exfiltration, that will be here. And we want to get important data.txt. We will need an important data.txt in here. Also got a capital I. Now if you run this command, the transfer was successful, and you can see now down here it's just imported the important data.txt. So that could be an exploit, for example. Now, obviously, this is about data threat exfiltration. So to exfiltrate data, you can also simply use TFTP minus I, the Kali Linux IP address, and instead of using get, you want to use put and then the exploit.txt. Okay, so we had a permissions error on the C drive there, so I'm gonna show you from the desktop instead. So like with the uh, get TFTP, it's gonna be very similar. So use TFTP with the I flag again with the Kali Linux box IP address. And instead of using get, you're gonna use put and the path to the sensitive data that you wanna exfiltrate. So if you run that, 
you'll get a transfer successful. If you go back to your Kali Linux box, you'll then see the imported data.txt is within the directory that you've specified. So that's using TFTP. So just to recap here what we've done, um, we've used TFTP, which is port 69, so that might be allowed through the firewall. We've used port 21, which is FTP, which could be allowed through the firewall. We've used SMB, and we've also used HTTP. So these are all things that might be allowed through the firewall that you can try. Um, okay, so using SCP, um, you can use this command, SCP, the username of your Kali Linux box and the IP address with the directory of the, um, the data that you want to input onto the Windows machine and also the path of where you want it to be on the Windows machine. If you run that, it's going to ask you for a password. So pop in the password of your Kali Linux box and that's going to SCP data across. So as you can see, that's just popped up there. So that could be an exploit that you might want to run on the Windows machine. To exfiltrate data, it's a similar command, it's uh, SCP, the data that you want to exfiltrate, which is there, and the IP address and username of your Kali Linux box, and also the directory where you want to put it. So temp in my case, run that, it's going to ask you for a password, pop in the password, and that's the data that's been sent across. So if we now go to the temp directory, here, you will see that exploit SCP and SCP data is in there. So that's SCP. Uh, I just want to give a special mention at the end of this video to DNSCAT. I'm not going to show you this because actually, you know what, it's, it's usually not necessary to use DNS to exfiltrate data, plus it's really slow. Um, but if it comes to the point where you've tried everything and you really need to get this data out, DNS might be a way forward because it's typically allowed because you know searching host names is usually an important thing within a network, so definitely try that. Um, so this has been a few ways to exfiltrate data. Thanks for watching, give us a like, thank you.